Yo, what I really do, DC Gang, welcome back to the channel, my boys, my gangsters. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day out there, gang. She. So with that being said, I'm gonna go over a few things. One of them is that um, if I sound mellow or have or I seem like I'm low on energy, it's because I do have stupid ass COVID. <laughs> I got COVID, so my head is buzzing and my joints are on fire, but, you know, it's not as bad as it was yesterday, so I decided to pop out and make the video for the gang, because you guys show up for the video, so I gotta show up and make the video, you know what I mean? So, also, I don't have my regular headphones, and I have my hat on like this, you get to see my hair. <laughs> it's because they clamp them to my head, and it makes it worse, and I'm still wearing the hat, because it's a part of the channel, bro. I've never made a video without my hat on. It's like my good luck charm. So with that being said, enough with the yapping. I was watching um the the Meta Weekly tournaments. I think it was number 18, and um, one of the decks that was showcased is this deck right there, uh, right here. So I wanted to share with you guys because it's an extremely unique, fun way to play Exo Sisters, and a lot of you actually. A lot of my subscribers liked or used to like playing Exo Sisters, so I decided to show it show it off because this deck plays on turn zero, and it's actually kind of insane how you do that stuff. So let me go to the website real quick. All right, gang, here we are. Now before I forget, because sometimes I forget to say it, I just want to give you guys a reminder that if you guys enjoy the content, please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the boy, because I would greatly appreciate it. Now, um, if just to give you guys a little background context on what the heck this is. Um, if you guys don't know what you probably do, but DK is a big YouTuber. He runs tournaments every Sunday. This is uh, from the top meta weekly 118 if I'm not mistaken. And out of 160 players, this person right here, Miss UK, they made it to the top 16 out of 160 players with this Exo Sister deck that plays on turn zero. What? Now the reason why it does that is because of none other than the butler, which I low-key want to play Labyrinth. Now I'm not even going to front. I'm probably going to play Labyrinth this season because this is hella strong. This thing is actually really nuts. I haven't played Labyrinth in so long because like I find it annoying when I play against it. But I'm going to try this because this is crazy. I have the cards, so this is crazy. Um, and this deck is can actually be way better or more toxic because this is a respectable deck the only floodgate that they're really running is dimensional shifter and ironically you can kind of play this deck the way you play labyrinth with more toxic uh regular traps which you know like the virus and stuff like that you could definitely play those uh, hand, uh those traps in this deck which he made this very respectable now we're gonna go over the deck list because it's exactly the same i like the way it's built so i'm not gonna change anything so we're running three maxi we're gonna run three ash blossom for ash blossom reasons you don't synchro in this deck unless it's uh chaos angel so you don't care about the fact that she's a tuner we're gonna run one aratama um, because you know level fours you could basically do the combo with Sakitama and Aratama So we're gonna run three Elias. You always run three Elias in every Exo Sister deck because she's one of the main sisters Then we're gonna run the uh, one copy of the Exo Sister Irene One copy of the Sophia which I really like Sophia because she draws you a card if you have another Exo Sister card on the field Then we're gonna run one Stella. You don't need more than one We're gonna run uh, three Exo Sister Marthas of course. We're gonna run two Sakitamas and then we're gonna run two dimensional shifters we're gonna run three butlers because again this is how you play on turn zero which is insane and then we're gonna run the pot of prosperity which is actually really good in this deck you're gonna see why because of the extra deck it's full with three of almost everything so then we're gonna run two Cobra the Graves because Cobra the Grave is extremely strong. And if you have Martha on the field and you have Cobra the Grave, you could trigger the Martha with the Cobra the Grave, which is a little crazy. Then we're gonna run three Exo Sister packs, of course. We're gonna run one evenly matched. Uh, only one. <laughs> if you wanna bump it up to two and run the deck that's at 44, I don't think it'll change much in ratio wise. Then we're gonna run three Infinite Impermanence, of course. We're gonna run three Trap Tricks. Yes, sir. Three trap tricks because you could always set the trap trick with the butler, and then you could search the infinite impermanence or the the Ruma cannon on your opponent's first turn. So your turn zero, you, you, you're gonna see the craziness in the replays. Then we're gonna run three Exo Sister Baddest. Yes, sir. Three of them because again, you could start making this play on turn zero. Activate this thing, set this down. If your opponent moves a card from the graveyard outside to the field, you could banish a card. You can negate a monster, you can shut down the graveyard, whichever one of the sisters you want out here, it's a family meeting, bring her out. So then we're gonna run one Exo Sister Returnia, I low key wish this could be played at 2, but you kinda don't wanna play it at 2 because you need Exo Sister monsters on the field 
in order to activate this thing so for turn zero plays you're not gonna you're not gonna use this at all and then we're gonna run three destructive the room mechanics yeah that's that's how that goes we're gonna run one chaos angel because making it with the level six butler and any one of your light <laughs> level 4 monsters which all of them are like level 4's you make an unaffected chaos angel that can only be affected by spells then we're gonna run did I go? yeah I went over that so then we're gonna run 2, two exosister as a file we're gonna run 2 gabrines we're gonna run 2 caspid tells 3 Michaelis, 3 magnificas 1 divine arsenal aka double Zeus, which is limited to 2 now and then we're gonna play 1 sp the little knight aka stuart little now again we're gonna go back to the game because it's the exact same deck list and i'm really excited to show you the replay right, so like i said it's the same exact deck list we're gonna get into the replays now i want to be completely honest with you though i don't know exactly how good the deck is to climb on ladder because i didn't get to play as many games as i usually play with decks you know i play about 60 it's, it varies between 20 60 and 80 games that i usually play with each deck each season so i can show it to you so i i didn't play that many i think i played maybe 12 13 games with this deck so i have six replays i don't know exactly how good it is to climb but the fact that you could play on turn zero is crazy so with that being said enough with the yapping let's get into the replays Hi, right, my boys here we are for replay number uno number one of the day now mind you i didn't get to see this person duel too much during the tournament so i'm not 100 percent sure whether this deck is meant to go first or second because it kind of does well on both turns which is why i like it so much so here because you can play it on either turn so here they're going to activate the dark bracket and beast getting themselves the opening of the spirit gate they're going to set that thing down activating its effect to search another dark beckoning beast which can be special summon and i don't want you to be confused because you're probably going to think we're playing against sprite we're not as they go into the sprite elf you're going to see what we're playing against they're going to activate the opening of the spirit gate getting rid of a max c special summon one of the dark beckoning beast now mind you at this point in time i was like you got rid of a max c that either means you have another copy in the hand or you were just trying to have an honorable duel without max c but here they're going to activate the sprite and this is when i toggled on because the whole time i was playing toggled off not letting my opponent know that i had disruption so we're going to activate the button now mind you make sure that you're toggled on when you make this play because as soon as they special summon this dark beckoning beast you can activate the duel with my change everything face down and link monsters get him out of here on turn zero this is crazy it's crazy so here we're going to join to a Martha, which I was extremely happy about. Activate the Martha, they have an Ash Blossom, so they're feeling joyous. No, they're not, because luckily for us, we had the call by the Grave to dial them digits. Get it out of there. You're not feeling joyous anymore, and it's definitely not spring over there, because it's musty. <laughs> so from here on on, we're going to special summon the Martha, special summon the Elias. He's going to hit me with a Max C, the second copy, as we kind of knew. Then they get nothing off of this because I normal summon the Sakitama and Sakitama is just an extra normal summon so they don't get to draw for that and then I normal summon the Sophia and I'm going to go plus one because we get to draw a card of, of for the Sophia which is joined to another Martha which is amazing as we see summon into the Michaelis when they're out here. We're going to activate Michaelis effect to search. We're going to search ourselves the uh, Returnia and then we're going to quick effect try and banish the opening gates. As they activate the Sharvara, there it is. It's an unchained deck. It's not it's not sprite, it's just unchained. They're gonna pop the Dark Beckoning Beast, especially some of the Sharvara. I'm still gonna slap that thing in the face. Get it out of here. Yeah, they're gonna get to search out a trap, so what? Congratulations. Because if I don't pop it, they're just gonna flip this thing face up and link it off and get the trap anyways during their turn. So why wouldn't I pop it now, right? Get it out of here. And then we know this thing has zero defense, so we're gonna slap it, get it out of here, and slap them without 1600 we're gonna set down our back row and our turn so they basically got what a plus one over the maxi and our board is looking juicy because we have the return here which means we could banish a card from almost anywhere and then we have our two level fours which is for if, if anything leaves that graveyard we get another banish we can shut down the graveyard we could do whatever we want and on chain likes to leave the graveyard so here they're gonna normal summon it right here and i activated the return here to try and force out the um the trap which they did which I knew would actually activate the butler in the graveyard to special summon back onto the field. Bring it out here. Nothing free. Nothing free. Bring the butler out. Again, both of these cards get popped. 
that's gonna trigger that right here so they can special summon a Shayama. Shayama is gonna destroy our Elias, unfortunately. But it's fine, I wasn't too worried. If you're wondering why I made that play, it's because I did not think they were gonna have a, a, a Ruha in the hand. I was like, what are the odds that you have another way of popping this thing if you open up with this hand that you open up with, right? So I'm like, hey, it was pretty good chances. I should've, I should've played differently, but it's fine. Cause they activate the Shayama, pop the Aruha, Shayama gets to go back onto the floor, Aruha gets to activate the special summon and on-chain Souls of Disaster, which they're gonna use my Makalis as material to link off into the on-chain Souls of Rage. Bring it out here. So from here on, um, basically any normal trap that I could draw into is a, is a big play, because again, I can't special summon the Makalis, but even if we don't, I can still make a Chaos Angel and we're unaffected from everything including this thing right here. So here we get the top deck of a lifetime because I get a pot of prosperity. Now it's not the best but we still get to search right and I went for the whole 6 cards. Yup. Banish 6 because I need to see what the heck we can get in here. We get the Daruma Cannon, Maxi, Exorcist Advantage, Trap Trick, Infinite Impermanence and an Aritama. So I'm gonna get the Daruma Cannon. And this is why this, this card is freaking insane because watch this. We activate the butler, get him out of here, activate the Daruna cannon, get the freaking Souls of Rage out of here. So Yama gets to get flipped face down and I get to do my whole Exosister combo with the Martha. Yeah, um, the deck is a little crazy. Is a little crazy. The fact that you can do that, you can move the butler out of the way to special summon the Martha if you have a trap, that's a good synergy right there. And if you can't move it out of the way, just make a Chaos Angel. <laughs> it's that simple. So with that being said, let's go into the next replay. Ah, I gang. So here we are for replay number no those, and we're going second again. Now I do have going first replays. It's just going second felt amazing, especially when you could pop off. So here they're gonna activate the fusion deployment, getting the grand enough. Well, showing the grand Lose so they could special summon the blazing cartesia and there it is somebody tried to tell me that branded lost is not a floodgate branded lost is a floodgate bro so they're gonna activate the branded lost they're gonna activate the blazing cartesia here using itself and a mercarrier to fusion summon into the dust dragon bring it out here they're going to activate the dust dragon activating the branded lost Brandon Lose is probably gonna search out another Mercurier. Oh no, they search out the Albion, the Shredder Dragon. And then the Dust Dragon is gonna send a Serenir to the graveyard, activate the Serenir, send the Retribution, activate the Alvin Shredder Dragon to send the uh, Brandon Fusion to the graveyard so they can recycle it with the Retribution back to the hand. Regular Brandon place. Regular Brandon place. So when I get this thing back to the hand, the Shredder Dragon gets to go back to the deck, they draw a card, they activate the Brandon Fusion, I'm gonna ash that. Immediately, you know I was saving that thing toggled off the whole time. I <laughs> immediately stopped that right there because this duel would have been different if I didn't. That's gonna end the turn locally for us. So here we're gonna join to an Elias. We're going to activate the Sakitama just to bait out, see what else all the shenanigans they had. If they want to respond to this, they didn't. So we're gonna normal summon a Stella. Use both of these monsters right here to go into a Casper Tower. We're going to activate the Caspital effect. We're going to shut down the graveyard and then we're going to get rid of the material. We also kind of get bodied by Ash, unfortunately. That's one of the downsides to the sisters. Ash, Ash, Ash stops all of that shenanigans. We're going to go to the battle phase. We're going to take 200 life points to the face because we're going to make a Zeus. We're going to make a Zeus because the Branded Laws basically says I cannot play the game while my opponent is playing the game and we don't want that. Get rid of the board, get it out of here. It's gonna trigger the Blazing Cartier in the end phase so they could get it back to the hand. And then here I wasn't too worried. I have a Trap Tricks, I have a The Ruma Cannon, and a 3000 Body Beast Stick. I can't wipe the board anymore, but I'm not too worried. So here they're gonna go to the battle phase, hit me with an evenly match. I'm gonna banish everything besides the Trap Trick because I wanted to see how they would start playing the game. To see what type of trap I actually needed to play, so they're gonna get the Blazing Cartesia here. And with the trap tricks, I'm gonna search out a trap here. So they're gonna fusion summon with the Blazing Cartesia and the um, Tragedy. So they're gonna go into a Coritis. That's that's what they're doing. They're gonna fusion summon into Coritis. With the trap tricks, I'm gonna banish a Varis so I can set down a Varis because they probably want to get a monster out of the graveyard. And if not, th the brand of fusion is in there. And they're gonna try and get that brand of fusion out here by any means necessary. And if you get it out of here, but this is gonna activate, I get a banish, I get to shut down the graveyard, I get to make any any one of the systems that we want to go into, we could go into. So they're gonna get the Jester Alubur over here. They're gonna end their turn, which to me was questionable. I don't know if they thought that Varis was gonna 
disappear out of the field or like what they they don't know what trap tricks does because you decided not to play the game because of the fact that I set this down in your back row but I still get to activate this during my turn so I don't understand the top process there I'm gonna activate the Viris though get the Sophia out of here I mean out here in the arena they're gonna school because it's full combo from here and I have a maxi and I have a normal summon yet and I have two cards in the hand it says connection failed that they left, bro. Because I can go full combo right here. They don't have any hand traps. We know what they searched. So what are you supposed to do? He made a mistake. He should have just played through the Vadis. So with that being said, let's go to the next replay. Yes, sir. Here we are for replay number three. Number three of the day. And after this, I'll show you the going first replays, bro. I got you. <laughs> it's just it's more fun going second and doing the turn zero plays. As they activate the portal prosperity, they're gonna hit an infinite impermanence, evenly match and pathfinder. They get the infinite impermanence in the hands. They're gonna normal summon the pathfinder. And I knew this, this could be Castura, right? But you never know. It could be Horus with some pathfinder shenanigans. So I'm gonna throw the shifter out there. They're gonna activate the Pathfinder, getting it out of here so they can search the Pressure Planet Race Off, which now I know they're playing Castira, right? Activating its effect, searching out the Unicorn. So yeah, they're gonna special summon the Unicorn, activate the Unicorn's effect. Of course, I'm gonna hit that thing with an Infinite Impermanence. Negate it infinitely. Stop that right there. So here they're gonna set down to back row and end their turn. Here we're gonna join to a Stella, which I was extremely happy about. But before we do all of that, since we do lose to an Ash, just in case I did want to activate the Pot of Prosperity, even if we can't end the game here, if I can get advantage um, by getting rid of the board and then setting up my board, we're gonna be good. So I activate the Pot of Prosperity, we're gonna banish three. We're gonna hit a Sakitama, Maxi, and Elias. So I got the Maxi to the hand. I got a Maxi to the hand because if they do stop me, then during their turn, I'm just going to throw that thing out because we can throw it out because the shifter is going to be done after that, right? So here we're going to normal summon the Stella, activate the Stella's effect. They're going to hit the thing with the infinite impermanence, which is why I started the combo like this too. Because, and by starting the combo, I mean, this is why I activated her effect. Because I don't have to activate Stella's effect, I could just activate Elias' effect and special summon it. But if they negate this and they have the Elias, it's better because I still get both of my level 4s onto the field. As they're gonna look at my extra deck, banishing Magnifica, I'm fine with that because again, Elias, special summon it. We're gonna gain 800 life points, and with both of these monsters, we're gonna go into the Caspital. And I don't think they had any more interruption after this. Because we get to shut down the graveyard, activate its effects to charm Martha, which means we get to go full combo, special summon Martha, special summon Elias. With both of these monsters, we're going to exceed into the Michaelis, bring it out here. Bring her out here, activate Michaelis effect so we can search out a Varis, because again, we're not going to end the game this turn, we know that. We're going to banish the back row, which is funny because it was an evenly matched. Which... Banish you attack. It could have it could have been bad, but then again, I was gonna end up with this here anyways. So we're gonna exceed so many to Magnifica, which means yeah, the evenly match wouldn't have been good anyways. So with the Magnifica here, we're gonna just slap over the unicorn. I'm not gonna use the materials, or I'm not gonna try and banish the unicorn. And then we get to attack twice, so we hit up for the 1400. And if you're wondering why we're doing so little damage. It's because of the Pot of Prosperity, because of damage in half. The whole point was not to end the game this turn, it was to end it now. Because <laughs> I throw the Maxi, even if they have more Castira Mods, it's a sad time. You have to Special Summon it. That's why I preemptively threw it out to play around the Simple Tactic Talent. My Kalis had two materials, so I can banish two cards off of the field or... Well, one card off of the field, one card off of the field or graveyard, and the Varis is there, so I can... Ba Basically, we could banish cards from almost everywhere. So with that, and they have to do with Maxi. So with that being said, let's go to the next replay. Right, Familia, so here we are for replay number four, I believe it is, four. I got two more after this, six of them. So here we're gonna start off, our hand is actually juicy, we're gonna activate the Martha, they're gonna hit us with the Maxi. So unfortunately, it's not that juicy, cause we have to low-key play under that right now. Which is not too bad, cause they're gonna get a plus one off of this, I'm gonna set down my back row and my turn. Because I could go into my Kayla set, search out if that is, and give them the plus two, but I was okay with having Martha on the field. If they, if any card gets moved out of the graveyard, we exceed summon. I have that is, which means I can get two more level four monsters on the field, and I have a trap trick. So if I need the room mechanic, I can search it out. So here they're gonna draw another card. They're gonna activate the Dragon Shrine, which ironically, this is legitimately. The only play that they could have made that would allow me to play against this deck because this is a pendulum deck. 
and pendulum decks do not need to touch the graveyard at all and this deck only does this with this combo right here so i was extremely happy I'm like, okay they're gonna special summon the supreme king dragon dark worm so i'm gonna activate that for this because you're gonna move a card from the graveyard onto the field they're gonna activate the wings of light it's getting dark out here for them they just don't know it as they get the supreme gate magician onto the hand we're gonna special summon two level four monsters on the field and look at the craziness and why exorcist used to be so tough they're gonna activate this since effect. You move the card of the graveyard, have four sisters on the field, four XE summons. Activate the Elias, chain two. Activate the Irene, chain three. Activate the Sophia, chain four. And activate the Martha, chain five. Which means we get all of the sisters. It's a family reunion. Bring them out here. Active, well, go into the Casper Town. Bring it out. Sophia is gonna basically become a Michaelis. It doesn't really matter the order that you do them in. It's just we just like see somebody like crazy. Irene gets to go into a Gobrine. <laughs> this deck is nuts, bro. Sometimes this deck is actually nuts. And then Elias gets to go into a Asaphire. So we have all of the XC sisters on the field off of one move that our opponent made. And this is the only move that they're ever gonna do in this deck to move a card of the graveyard. Activate as a file, activate Caspitel, no more graveyard shenanigans, which doesn't matter because they don't use the graveyard, but we're gonna do it anyways. They're gonna activate the Odd Eyes Revolution, paying 500 life points to get the Supreme King Dragon Lightworm. They're gonna special summon this thing or special normal summon it actually. So we're gonna banish it out of here because this is, this is the only tuner that I know of that they can play. And this thing enables a lot of shenanigans, so I'm gonna get it out of here as soon as possible with the Michaelis. They're gonna set the Supreme Gate in the back, activate its effect to pop itself to set down the Supreme King Zero. They're gonna activate the um, Autograph, which because the card was popped, it gets a special summon. Here they're gonna get another uh, Game Magician to the hand. They're gonna get both of these monsters out of here to Fusion Summon into the Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom. And this thing is crazy because they activate its effect and they're gonna try and copy this thing's effect which says it's not even this, where's it at? This gain attack and defense equal to half of your opponent's LP, which is insane. Once per turn you can pay half of your life points, shuffle all other cards from the field and the graveyard into the deck. Which, yeah, no, we're not allowing that. We're not allowing that. Activate the Gabrine, we have to negate that. That's insane, bro. <laughs> it's the whole field wipe now, we're good on that. Negate that thing. You're gonna activate the Chronograph Sorcerer? So I'm gonna activate the trap trick here. Like I said, if we needed the Ruma Cannon, we can banish one and search one out. This is why we play three copies. Bring the Ruma Cannon onto the field because I knew that the only play they have left is to Pendulum Summon. And if they Pendulum Summon, they're gonna Pendulum Summon a bunch of monsters. They knew that the Ruma Cannon is gonna flip everything face down. They can't do anything about it. If I wanna make a Susa Cannon, I'm gonna make a Magnifica. Gabriel is gonna give us the attack boost. It's, it, yeah, it's gonna be GG's. It's gonna be GG's and it's crazy because the only reason I got to make this board is because the only one play that they were making in the graveyard <laughs> which is insane so with that being said let's go to the next replay Hi gang here we are for replay number cinco number five of the day and we open up with full combo once again beautiful hand as they hit us with the max C I do have to call by the grave that because I want to play the game I'm not gonna wait and be like okay don't activate the call by the grave then they throw their maxi, then I activate the cover of the grave, but they might have follow up. I'm not allowing that, we're just gonna play the game now. Our maxi is also negated, that's fine with us, but we're gonna play the game. So we're gonna hit the maxi with the finger, that way we're allowed to play the game by special summoning the Martha. They're gonna hit that thing with the ash. By the way, I've been getting hit with this freaking this freaking triple triple combo, this ash, maxi, and you're gonna see the other one in a second. I've been getting hit with that thing like all day every day for the past month. As we're gonna special summon the Elias, we're gonna use both of these monsters to exceed summon into the Michaelis. Because we already have the Vidis, we can play, play the game like this. Michaelis is gonna activate, we're gonna search our trap, and there it is. This guy opened up with Infinite Impermanence, Ash Blossom, and Max C. I've been getting hit with this triple combo really frequently lately, so I'm gonna activate the Michaelis to just manage the Ash Blossom off of the graveyard. No specific reason. We don't play Hida, so there's no point in that thing being down there. But we're just gonna get it out. We're gonna set down our Varis and end our turn. That's all we have is Varis, because again, Maxi is negated. As they normal summon a Speedroid Terra Top, they're gonna get themselves the um, Take Tomb Bird. And they're gonna use two level three monsters to go into the Marigis Stalio, which we're playing against Salamangre. 
We're gonna activate the things effect, detach a material from it, special summon the Salaman Grid of Fire. Bring the flames, then as they get the gazelle onto the hand, link off the Salaman Grade of Fire into the Salaman Grade Bay Links. Which we know how this is going. You're gonna activate the Bay Links, search out for the fuel spell. Gazelle is gonna activate because a monster, a Salaman Grade monster was sent to the graveyard. Bring it out here. They're gonna get themselves to Sanctuary, as I said, that's the Salaman Grade home, as they activate the Gazelle. They're gonna send a Jaguar to the graveyard. This is when I became happy as heck. Because I know they're gonna bring that thing back onto the field from the graveyard as they link off into a Sunlight Wolf, activate the Marush Stalio. He gives me my shorty back. Thank you for that, because I, I, I like her back in the extra deck. As they activate the Jaguar, I'm gonna activate the this. Because now they get to recycle the Marush Stalio to special summon the Jaguar. I'm gonna bring two monsters onto the field. You move the card out of the graveyard, which means I get to exceed summon into the lady, well, my extra sister that you just put back in my extra deck. Of course, they're going to activate the Sunlight Wolf to recycle one of the fire monsters back to the hand. With the Arena, we're going to Exceed Summon into my Makalis that you just put back in my extra deck. Congratulations, you played yourself. With the Arena, we're going to Exceed Summon into a Gabrine because I'd rather have the monster negate. Shutting down the graveyard right now is not a big deal. Yeah, I'm going to stop a Promethean Princess if they bring it out. But I decided that this would probably be the best play because I can banish a cutoff for the field. If I banish the Sunlight Wolf, that is the only Link 2 that they have right here. So they're going to have to go into a Link 2 again. I don't have an Ash in here. I don't play Fire Monster besides Ash. They can't go into Hira. So I knew that I'm basically forcing them to make plays that they don't want to play. Makayla is banishing Sunlight Wolf. Of course, they have a Sight and Mining though. They're going to get rid of the Weasel and get themselves a Ladybug because they have a normal summon there. Normal summon the ladybug, link off into another copy of the bay links. Bring it out here. Bay links get to activate. Well, no, not really. They already did. And they use all three of these monsters to link off into the Promethean Princess. Which I knew it, it, is what, what I was low key forcing them to do. Because again, they can't go into Hira. They can't. So this is the only play that they have left. They're gonna activate the Promethean Princess and I'm gonna activate the Gabrine to negate the Princess. She's not my royalty because I'm not playing her right now. Usually she is. But um, they're gonna go for the Battle Phase and this is another mistake that this guy made. He chose to get more damage onto my life points than to get rid of my Searcher. My guy decided to destroy the Gabrine instead of destroying the Michaelis which is my Searcher. Congratulations, you have also played yourself. So here we're gonna draw into an infinite impermanence and this would have been a different game if we would have killed the Michaelis because now I can activate Michaelis, get myself a Pax to the hand, activate the Pax, pay the 800, get myself the Martha. And I did it like this because I was trying to see if anything would prompt. Yeah, he has no hand traps left or nothing, especially some of the Martha and he knows where we're going from here. That princess is getting banished, my boy. She's going home and she's not coming back. So with that being said, let's go to the next uh, replay game. So here we are for that. This should be the last replay, but I'm going to show you one that's really quick again. Rescue Ace is it's really fast. So this is the almost last replay. So we're going to summon the Aritama. Normal summon it to search out the Sakitama, which we have an extra normal summon with the Sakitama. Two level fours, we go into the Caspital. We're going to activate Caspital Effect, get rid of a material, get ourselves the Martha. I don't remember if we got to go full combo, but it looks like we are. We're going to special summon the Martha, special summon the Elias, and with both of these monsters, you know where we're going. Bring out the Michaelis. Michaelis gets to activate her effect, get rid of a material, getting ourselves the Returnia since we have the bad is. And we both, we did go full combo because we're going to go into the Magnifica. Bring it out here. We get to set down our back row and end our turn. So yeah, they're going to draw their card, they're going to start off the combo. Okay, we're playing against Horus. They're going to activate the King Sarcophagus. Oh, we're playing against Notoria. I forgot. This is uh, Notoria Horus. Uh, Horus Notoria. So they're going to send the Cricket to the graveyard. I'm going to get rid of the material because I'm going to try and banish the, the King Sarcophagus. Get it out of here. So that way they can't special summon from the graveyard. They're going to normal summon a Camellia. They're going to activate Camellia's effect. I'm going to activate the Magnifica again. Because by doing this, I get extra benefits, right? We're going to exceed summon into the Michaelis. Which means I can banish a card from anywhere on the field or graveyard. Because they're going to send the trap. I can't stop the trap. But they activate the trap. They activate the Camellia. So I'm going to activate the, uh, the Michaelis. And I'm going to banish the Mole Cricket. Because I know they're going to try and special summon it. But of course he has a Notoria Blessing, which means he can special summon that thing from the graveyard back onto the field. So I decided to activate the Returnia here. 
stop that right there and activated the baddies. Now here I goofed. I big goofed and I know I big goofed but you don't have to tell me. You're gonna see why. You're gonna see why. I did the chain link correctly but I messed up. So we're gonna activate what is. We're gonna switch to summon it Elias. Get the cricket out of here. Get the uh, Camellia out of here by banishing him. They're gonna special summon another Camellia. And then the trap gets to activate to get another Naturia Blessing. Now this is the thing where I goofed. I was supposed to bring a Martha back onto the field because if my opponent doesn't move the card from the graveyard, none of these activate. Only Martha activates if I move the card from the graveyard, which I did with the Returnia. But luckily for us, it's gonna stop them anyways because they got themselves another Notoria Blessing. There's no monster in the graveyard for them to special summon. And if they don't have another Notoria monster in the hand, they can't they can't synchro into anything. Which they're gonna go battle phase, slap the Stella, get it out of here. Main phase two, and they're gonna school. They don't have any more plays. They don't have any more plays. <laughs> so they surrendered. Uh, we still have a PAX. We definitely can go full combo again. Because, again, uh, Michaelis is on the field. I, I just have to normal summon Sophia, exceed summon, activate the PAX, and get another Martha. And we're going to share. We're going all the way. So, with that being said, it's going to the next and real last replay of all the Alright, so this is the last replay. Turn zero game. <laughs> We play on turn zero, and this is against Rescuates, which is why I wanted to show it to you. I probably should have shown you this replay first. Hopefully, you made it this far into the video. But this is the best combination: Butler, Infinite Impermanence, and the Ruma Cannon. Yeah, especially if you have multiple Infinite Impermanence. Yeah, this is crazy. So you're gonna normal summon the Airlifter. I'm gonna Infinite Impermanence. Stop that right there. That's your normal summon. That's your main searcher. We're gonna stop that. Yeah, congratulations. The only thing that can save them is the field spell, which they have. They're gonna activate the AQ, so that way they normal summon a Hydrant onto the field. They activate the Butler, set down the Daruma Cannon, activate the Daruma Cannon. You already used your limited to two normal summon. They can only normal summon twice if they have the field spell. I'm not gonna allow them to start linking over making plays. I'm just gonna flip everything face down now. They're gonna activate a reinforcement of the army, getting another copy of an airlifter, and they're gonna set down a back row. Now this is really good for me because it shows me that they don't have a hand, they don't have an ash, they don't have a maxi, they don't have anything. The only thing that I have to worry about is this thing. And I wasn't even worried about it because when it was my turn, it started prompting before I had a monster on the field, which lets me know you either have a call by the grave or a cross out designator. Because infinite impermanence does not prompt right now unless it's a monster on the field. So yeah. I already knew what it was. It was it was a call by the grave or, or, or a cross out. I didn't get to see because I activated the packs, get myself the Martha, special summon the Martha, I can speed it up because he just cool. He just cool. You're stopping your opponent on turn zero. If you can read hand traps, it's even better because I didn't even have to worry about anything. I knew that that back row again was either a call by or a cross out. Because if, if, if your field is empty and your opponent's hand is prompting, like if it's turning red, and you know what card they have in the hand because he only has airlifter. You know it's not Valor. And you know that it can't be infinite impermanent because there's no monsters in the field for you to negate. It's either crow, cross out or call by. So with that being said, let's go back to the deck. Alright gang, so here we are back at the deck list portion of the video. Like I said, you can play this deck in many different ways and depending on, on what hand trap, I mean what traps you want to play. I think it's really good like this. Again, they made it to the top 16 of, 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 out of 160 players. I didn't get to play enough games with the deck to tell you whether it's good or bad to climb with. But you're playing shifter. You can play on turn zero. It seems like the deck is a little cracked. So that's all I'm gonna say. With that being said, again, if you guys enjoyed the content, please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, because I would really appreciate it. If I feel well tomorrow, I would like to stream. Since I have COVID, I'm gonna be off. So I might just stream tomorrow, just letting you guys know. Continue having a great day, and I'm gonna catch you guys next time. Peace.